issue of fuel. Okay? So a little background there. No? Two months ago, the Department uh, of Environment and Natural Resources came up with a department order uh, seeking uh, all the petroleum companies to make available yung tinatawag nila na Euro 4 fuels, no? which is supposed to be a cleaner fuel. No? Uh, as against to the current fuels na ginagamit ng Pilipinas, which is Euro 2. Ang pinaka keyword siguro dito, natandaan natin when you talk about Euro 4 standard, is the sulfur content, uh, the benzene content of the fuel, and the aromatics, yung hydrocarbons na nabag namin. Ito po yung mga laman ng fuel natin na pinagurian natin na pulutas. Okay? Uh, very important to Euro 4 na ito kasi this will be the basis of the discussion today. Okay? Uh, while waiting for the DNR representative, so mag-explain na ako ng konti about Euro 4 and, uh, fuels and the Euro 2 fuels na ginagamit natin. Ano ang difference ng Euro 4 at saka Euro 2? Currently, uh, ang Euro 2 no, na ginagamit natin, may, fuel, may, may sulfur content yung fuel na 500 parts per million. Okay. Uh, si si Wendy Gatini. Uh, he's coming over the uh, set up. Si, si Yusek yun is nasa chapter. Nasa chapter of nag-advise uh, siya. Uh, he's sending this one at ng anti-smoke benzene unit ng ng EMB. He's returning the poll. Anyway, uh, my guess is something kasi uh, yung technically the same on Euro 4 and uh, we have uh, here uh, kababayan from uh, Southern Korea. Meron akong kababayan po dito uh, who opened my eyes uh, into uh, uh, something that uh, I felt was part of my mandate as Committee on Energy Chairman. No? And uh, so yung mga technical details na yan at saka yung may mamaya may papakita sa inyo na video of uh, uh, how it is to, to uh, clean our fuels and probably even uh, make it uh, affordable uh, for, for our uh, consumers or our users. Um, nung, uh, anyway, uh, bakit pa tayo na dito ngayon? Uh, two days ago, uh, Gina Lopez, who is a, a trustee of uh, this uh, coalition, and uh, uh, I think chairman of the Bantay Kalikasan Foundation of ABS-CBN, uh, came to our uh, province, Mindoro, because uh, they wanted to uh, launch a nationwide program called Puno ng Buhay. Nung uh, nag-andami namin meeting, uh, together, multi-sectoral meeting din ito with the uh, Philippine Army, with the, with the PNR, with uh, mga, uh, mga kapalayan and uh, many others. Um, nung in-explain nila, sabi ko, Gina, ginagawa na namin sa Mindoro we have an UTOL program in Mindoro. So why don't we invite you and uh, show you what we have done? Because I think uh, what we have done, yung UTOL program or Unified Tree of Life program, which is our legacy program the Governor Boy Umani, who is my brother, and myself for having been elected in 2010. Uh, which is uh, which created some history of sorts in Mindoro because uh, for the first time in Mindoro politics, two brothers were elected. In the past, pag merong mag-ama, mag-ina, mag-kapatid, mag-asawa, uh, or mag-kamag-anak na tumakbo sa amin, either matalo yung dalawa or isa lang manalo. But uh, somehow we succeeded in 2010 in uh, uh, both of us uh, winning. Uh, my brother as governor and I as congressman. So sabi niya namin, we cannot leave, leave uh, Mindoro politics without leaving a good legacy. 
and that legacy is our Google program, which is actually a tree of life or a cleaning program. But this time, it is a focus approach, it is strategic, and uh, uh, it is uh, an organized uh, approach to greening Mindoro. So, nag-uusap kami nila, Gina, sabi ni Gina, eh, sabi ko kay Gina, Gina, punta ka na lang sa Mindoro at uh, tingnan mo yung ginawa namin and probably adopt Mindoro as one of your sites. And that is what uh, Bantay Kalikasan did in their puno ng um, uh, buhay program, eh, nireplicate nila. Tilingnan nila yung Mindoro and nireplicate nila and we're one of the five uh, areas where uh, uh, Bantay Kalikasan uh, Foundation and ABS-CBN uh, uh, has adopted and will feature in the puno ng buhay program nila. So, yun yung nangyari. Tapos nag-uusap sila ni Doc Mike. Sabi ko, Doc Mike, ah, sabi ko, Gina, ako, alam mo, I'm chairman ng Committee on Energy and I think uh, I also probably have a good answer to uh, uh, the objective of your coalition and uh, your uh, mission, the mission of your coalition. Ano yan? Sabi ko, ganito ito. So, kinuwin ko ko si Deo and uh, and uh, the product uh, that they have produced which is an award-winning product in the US. Kaya uh, uh, maganda ito kasi as you will see in the video later, you will see how the same engine, the same uh, vehicle that uh, is a smoke belcher, this is a jeep in UP, yung umiikot sa UP na puro uso, ay uh, pinalitan nung uh, bio city diesel or city bio diesel which is uh, their product. I'm not advertising itong produkto na ito. Ang nakita ko lang dito is this is a good way to really clean our air. And if we are to clean our air, I think rather than talk about corruption in the government, uh, corruption in the LTO, corruption in DDI and everything and try to change uh, the entire government because of corruption, I think uh, uh, we have to go back to basics. And the, the, the basic is try to address the issue of clean air front end. And what is that? Through the use of clean fuel. And there is a way to clean fuel uh, via the reduction of the sulfur content in fuel. And that is basically the product of uh, uh, Deo that uh, will be uh, shared with all of you. And then uh, if, uh, and then we will have this tested at some, uh, at the proper time, no? Yung produkto niya, kasi baka mamaya, eh, meron palang issue-issue uh, to uh, with uh, some scientists and experts, then, uh, Yung EMB is the proper venue for this. So, this is where we are right now. And uh, uh, when I met uh, Deo sometime in, uh, I think, about March of 2014, he told me about uh, petroleum because he's a petroleum engineer. And he, we talked about uh, power because he's also a technology uh, architect. So we were talking about natural gas and uh, we were talking about the way forward in the power sector to ensure that there is sufficient supply of power and cheaper uh, prices at that. And then we talked about fuel. And uh, he talked about cleaner fuel and cheaper fuels. And so in June 2014, I delivered a privileged speech, unfortunately, my speech coincided with the speech of uh, uh, Bong Revilla, who was uh, uh, having issues with the uh, Napoleon scam. So naturally, the media went there, and uh, uh, my speech did not uh, did not uh, uh, invite attention of uh, the media people. But then again, because of my advocacy and because of my uh, mandate as chair of Committee on Energy, I pursued this. And so this is why we are here now. 
and uh, this is part of my uh, my mission to re-engineer the energy sector towards sufficient power at cheaper rates and to uh, produce cleaner fuels at cheaper prices also. And so, uh, hopefully, uh, today's uh, event will, uh, will uh, catch uh, some space uh, and will be provided uh, uh, some space by the media because I think if we are to move this country forward, this is uh, the right thing to do. And uh, 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 I'm just here to champion the cause of uh, energy and, uh, and uh, uh, I have demonstrated my capacity to do that, uh, if you will recall, uh, yung emergency powers. We did not agree on leasing uh, power plants at a cost of at least 6 billion pesos uh, because we felt there was a better way of addressing the problem and that was through the interruptible load program. And so uh, now uh, we were able to go over the hump in the Luzon power crisis without spending a single centavo. Why? Because we did not lease, we did not allow the executive to lease at a cost of 6 billion we uh, pursued an ILP and from 115 megawatts of which we called only 50 uh, came forward, we now have about 900 megawatts of ILP with about uh, 200 uh, companies participating. And so we have already established and institutionalized the ILP to address our future power problems. But we are not stopping there because ILP is just a palliative. And we did not even use a single kilowatt of the ILP, so we really did say six billion because we did the right thing uh, by not uh, allowing the uh, lease of uh, the power plants as suggested by the uh, executive. And uh, dito naman, uh, ganun din, uh, we will continue on the power, but this time uh, I'd like to move on to the oil industry because when you talk of energy, it covers two sectors. One is uh, power and the other is oil industry. And we would now like to look at the downstream oil deregulation law, the promise of cleaner fuel with affordable rates. And this is uh, because uh, after uh, uh, 17 or 18 years of the P of uh, downstream oil deregulation law implementation, I think we went astray because we have dirty fuel and very expensive fuel at that. And so we like uh, that's why we need to re-engineer. We have to go back to basics, and now we're going back to basics through the production of cleaner fuels so that there will not be much problem at the back end. Kung maayos po natin yung problema natin sa simula pa lang, eh mas konting problema ang aayusin natin sa dulo dahil na-address na natin sa, sa unahan. And uh, so uh, I think this is uh, as managers of the sector, I think, uh, and as concerned citizens and as consumers and uh, as uh, citizens who breathe, breathe uh, and who want uh, to live longer, uh, we will have less uh, medical expenses, we will have less health concerns, we will uh, have cheaper uh, fuels, we will have cleaner fuels, this will be good for the environment and this will be good for our health. And so, I think uh, as managers, we have to do things right, and doing things right means that we should start go right so that uh, pagdating sa dulo ay kukunti uh, na lang yung uh, aayusin natin if at all. So uh, this is where we are right now, and uh, 
Uh, yun, uh, let me just introduce you. Yun, si Deo Relo, who is from uh, Mansalai, uh, an expert, a, a, uh, a living example of what brain, brain is all about. Uh, he is a petroleum uh, expert or a petroleum engineer, and he is a uh, system and technology architect, uh, helping me in the Committee on Energy to, uh, to learn more about uh, energy because uh, uh, I am a criminal uh, lawyer by, uh, by training. Uh, I was never exposed to uh, energy until I became chairman of Committee on Energy in 20, in uh, 18 September or October of 2013. And, uh, but I need to learn if I am to perform my mandate as Chairman of Committee on Energy in crafting good energy policies, both powder and both oil. And so I need uh, good people to back me up, to support me. Uh, Deo was introduced to me by uh, his uh, sisters, the, uh, uh, Jennifer, and uh, after that, uh, uh, things have changed. Uh, my perspective as uh, a uh, politician, as a leader, of uh, Oriental Window Exchange, and I hope that uh, uh, we can do something for uh, the country. Uh, and this is uh, now what I've been talking about, uh, uh, comparing ourselves to Singapore. Parang napakabigat na comparison ng Singapore. Uh, when you talk of Singapore, it is 600 square kilometers. My province and my island is 10,200 square kilometers. Singapore does not have a single oil resource, not even a single liter of oil. And yet when you talk of oil in Asia, it is Singapore that lords it. Uh, it is the hub of oil of the whole of Asia. All oil trading and dealing happens in Singapore and it does not even have a single oil resource. It used to be they don't even have water. They, ex they import water from Malaysia, but now they produce their own water and they can afford it even if it is expensive. Like power in Singapore is very expensive, but they can afford it because they became rich because they know how to use their talents like the talent of Deo in putting up all the industries, hosting all of the industries, and giving all the livelihood and employment opportunities to Singaporeans and uh, to the end uh, to all of the people, including our Filipino experts, both uh, both uh, experts and both uh, yung mga, mga uh, house helps, no? yung uh, mga mga yayaton, etc. na inaabuso, na bibitay pa, etc. They are able to host it. And they are a very small country, state, 600 square kilometers, 20 times smaller than Mindoro, consuming 50,000 megawatts of power, while Mindoro, which is 20 times bigger, consumes 40 megawatts. If they can do it in Singapore, why can't we do it in the country? Why can't we be the hub of natural gas for the country and make the difference uh, for the country? Because if we have the hub of natural gas in the country, uh, or in Asia rather, then we will be able to put up all of the industry, all of the power that we need to uh, power all of the industries that will provide all of the uh, livelihood and the employment opportunities and even the, uh, the sector where we can engage all of our brilliant minds that we export everywhere. And uh, I think this will overwhelm for the country and we will really move this country forward. So that is my vision. I, we have, together with Deo, we, are, uh, uh, we have uh, crafted a program called Mindoro Energy City and we are trying to buy for uh, uh, Mindoro and or Philippines becoming the hub of natural gas for the whole of Asia. 
And if and when this happens, I think we will change the, the ball game in the country and uh, we will really move this country to where it should rightly belong. And that is on top of Asia, probably even better than Singapore, Japan, Korea. Because uh, uh, I guess it's all about uh, it's all about uh, power. Because I do believe that power precedes development. And we never develop and we remain underdeveloped because we are underpowered. Our power is 16,000 megawatts, the whole country, well, well, uh, the supply, while our demand is 15,000 megawatts. So we just have a uh, gap, a surplus of about 1,000. And this has constrained us to develop because what can you do with 1,000 megawatts? How can one big industry like, a, say, a petrochemical plant or a cement plant or a glass plant live on uh, uh, a situation where our supply of power is, uh, is uh, insufficient? And every now and then, we have a looming power crisis uh, in Luzon, we are experiencing negative uh, uh, power in Mindanao and in, and in uh, Visayas. So, if I am the investor, why should I ever go to the Philippines when the power is not stable? And so, the thing is, we need to really increase and, uh, you know, it's a chicken and egg. Investors will look at power and when they don't see it, they will move elsewhere. On the other hand, the businessman would not, or the uh, power uh, investors or stakeholders, the generation companies, would not want to invest into power unless there is a taker. And so, what happens is that uh, you know, we have a thin uh, supply demand of power, and because of this, this has constrained our development. And so, uh, they opened my eyes on this, and I think uh, uh, this is where I am right now, championing the cause of power and energy, and I think uh, if we have to do things right, we should start uh, from, uh, from this particular presentation in the transport sector and in the, uh, in the environment sector. And, uh, and uh, if we will be, and if we succeed in doing this, I guess, uh, we are in for the bigger uh, thing. So uh, this is just the beginning of uh, what we want to happen. Uh, I, I guess uh, uh, when we are able to uh, achieve and uh, start it right, uh, we will be able to end it right. Thank you. And, uh, Maraming salamat, uh, uh, Dilawin Congressman Ray Omali. No? Uh, while still waiting for the host of this uh, event, the DNR, no? uh, uh, Director Yusek uh, Leones, uh, John Leones just texted me on the way na siya dito, talaga mo mahapon siya, okay? So, in the meantime, uh, siguro after the speech of uh, uh, our beloved congressman, uh, tatawagin na rin natin yung presidente ng grupo ko, no? Uh, we are very happy that the Coalition of Green Air Advocates uh, was invited in this particular press call. No? Ang simple lang po yung pinaglalaban ng Coalition of Green Air Advocates. Two words. Clean air. Clean air. Clean air. Yun lang. So, siguro most of you, especially your friends with the media, uh, monitor nyo naman yung movement natin. Uh, recently, we filed a case against LTO uh, for graphic corruption because of the issue of non appearance. No? Uh, on June 23, there's a second case that we're going to file. No? And uh, our president uh, will explain that later if you will. Meantime, let me call the president of the Coalition of Clean Air Advocates, uh, Giorgio Verano, or Mr. Herminio Verano Jr., to give us a few. Uh, words no? before I call our guest leader on si Pina Cardillo. Acknowledge natin yung presidente ng LDAP and secretary general will ask you to give a speech later. Uh, 
magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, Magpapasalamat ko ang kondisyon dahil kami inisama dito sa event ni na pinangunahan ni Congressman Mali. Uh, Unang-una po, uh, marami po kaming kausap ng mga inyero na ngayon lang namin, yun yung short when uh, usap namin ni Engineer Deo, I found out yung mga sinasabi ng mga ibang uh, engineers ay hindi pala tama regarding the fuel that uh, that's being sold dito sa ating country. Uh, ang collision po ay uh, nag-request sa DNR na ihihisen yung uh, pagpapatupad ng uh, Euro 4 standards ng fuel. So instead of next year, uh, nagpugyama po sa Secretary Pahe na on July 15 ay eh, implemented yung Euro 4 fuel. Uh, so far, only one, uh, two companies are capable of selling for fuels, which is uni oil and ethanol. Ethanol is only limited to gasoline. So, ang collision po, uh, kami po ay samahan ng, uh, from different sectors of the society. Uh, we started as a PETC group, and then uh, nagkaroon po ng pakikipag uh, 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 samahan sa kagaya ng grupo ng mga doktor at uh, ibang uh, sektor ng ating mga bansa. Mga, yan, meron po tayong mga kaparian at saka uh, yung mga transport groups po na umaamin na sila ay uh, isa sa mga dahilan ng uh, grabe pollution dito sa Metro Manila. Uh, 80% ng uh, pollution is coming from water vehicles. So tamang-tama po itong uh, event na ito dahil uh, we are trying to uh, combat yung air pollution through the legal channel, nag-file po kami ng kaso sa LPO dahil po sa kanilang uh, kapabayaan sa pag-implement ng Clean Air Act. Ang uh, mga bases and jeepneys na nakikita nyo sa EDSA, uh, supposedly yan po ay tinetesting ng LPO uh, Motor Vehicle Inspection System na sa aming kaalaman ay hindi pala gumagana. So, nakita namin na hindi pala yung testing dyan is uh, bogus lang. And uh, the transport groups are uh, even saying that they're paying 500 pesos per vehicle para hindi na nila kailangan dalhin ang kanilang mga sasakyan para magpa-emission test. Yung pong inuhuli ng DNR ng mga smoke belchers, ito po ay dinadala sa FBO para i-claim nila yung kailang plate numbers na tika nilang minaklas. And uh, naobserbahan namin na doon mismo sa FBO eh, hindi po marunong mag-test yung kanilang uh, naka-assign na mag-test. So, sa nag-offer po kami sa LPO na tutulungan namin silang ulihin yung mga uh, violators ng non-appearance testing. We donated a computer server, pati software, na tutulungan silang ulihin ito. Pero hindi po nila ito pinayagan. Kaya nagkaroon po kami ng uh, pag-iisip na maaari yung kinakampihan nila itong mga mandaraya na tumutulong sa pag palaganap ng pollution dito sa ating uh, Metro Manila area. Ang uh, normal uh, total suspended particulates uh, level po na sinasabi ng World Health Organization is 90 micrograms per normal cubic meter. Ang level po as of March dito sa Metro Manila is 145. Sa ibang bansa, pag 110 uh, micrograms per normal cubic meter ang level, hindi na po pinapapasok ang school children. Yeah, ina-advise sa mga tao na gumamit ng mask. Dito po sa atin, wala pong gumagawa niyan. Ang uh, tumasama po ang loob namin dahil mayroon po tayong mga uh, government agencies na dapat magpatupad ng cleaner act, eh hindi po nila ginagawa ito nilang mandato. So, nagkatang nagrarally po kami, sumusulat mula po ng isang taon, eh wala pong nangyayari. So, nawala ang last choice namin is just to file yung charges baka sakali po makinig sila. Ang nangyari nga po, nung nag-file kami ng charge sa LPO, eh nagkaroon nga po ng uh, pagpapago. Nahihirapan ng magpananapirans yung, yung mga transport uh, sector natin sa LPO dahil na, na-expose nga yung kanilang racket. At si Asekta naman, yung mga kaalyadong grupo na kasama ng polisyon, eh iniipit po ngayon, inaharas po yung mga membro natin. So, E yan po ay lalong nagpapatibay sa polisyon na ituloy ang laban para po hilingin sa ating Pangulo, nagbigyan sana tayo ng leader ng LPO na marunong magmahal sa malinis na hangin na dapat mas matinog at 
kaya i-implement yung kanyang uh, katungkulan na tinanggap niya po yung trabaho niya si LTO Chairman, dapat po wala pong excuses dito. Lahat po ng ating uh, uh, sinumpaan tungkulin ay dapat nilang uh, gawin. Ang susunod po namin kakasuhan naman is sa DPI, yung Department of Trade Industry, marami ang nagtatanong, bakit DPI? Eh, hindi po alam ng mga tao na ang DPI is supposed to uh, implement a nationwide uh, national motor vehicle inspection and maintenance program. So for the past 15 years, hindi po nila ito ginawa. Sumulat po kami sa kanila ng ipag-meeting, ang sinasabi po ni Yusek Limagiba, na nagawa na raw nila ito itong uh, programa nito to a presidential degree ni Pangulo Marcos. Ang sinasabi po namin, hindi na po uh, akma yung presidential degree kasi po meron na po tayong cleaner up. So, sumagot na naman po siya formally at sinabi pa rin na it's uh, the presidential degree daw ang nag-cover ng kanilang uh, mandato para sa National Motor Vehicle Inspection and Maintenance Program. So, malala dito nyo po nalalaman na Meron po tayong batas na napaka-haba, na napakalaki, na napakalaki ng kanyang, uh, uh, in, ng kanyang uh, contents. Pero ano lang po ito, it's just like, uh, sabi nga nila, suggestion lang pala yung batas dito sa Pilipinas. So yan po ang mangyayari. Kung hindi po natin sila kakasuhan, hindi po sila kikilos. At nagagalit po sila dahil bakit daw sila kinakasuhan. Pero wala na pong choice ang... Uh, ating kababayan. Hindi gumawa, gumagawa po tayo ng magkilos protesta, pero hindi naman po yung pinagiginggan. So, ito po, yun lang po ang aming uh, uh, ang aming uh, goal sa coalition is uh, for cleaner air dahil karapatan natin ang uh, ng bawat isa ang maging sa hangin. Sa ngayon po, ang, uh, ready na po si Angelo Deo as a nalilang po. Supposed to be the 30th anniversary of uh, a National Transport Day, June 1, 2015. Pero tayo yung Coalition of Clean Air of the Philippines sa Ombudsman at saka nag-file ng kaso laban sa LPO, particularly asset plan and certain groups. No? Ang sinasabi ng Presidente na si Mr. Virginia Verano, this coming June 23, 2012, no? is the 16th anniversary of the Clean Air Act of the Philippines, 1990. Itong June 23 po. 16 years na po yung Clean Air Act of 1993 sa June 23. Wala pa rin nangyayari. So, ang sinasabi ng Presidente namin, we will do something on June 23. Ano po yan? 50% ng, ng problema, in-address namin by filing a case sa LTO, kung mas mag-corruption. So June 23, the coalition will march again to Ombudsman and file a case against DPI. Okay. That's the remaining 50% for violation of Section 21D of the Clean Air Act of 1999. Okay. And siguro, later on, you can ask our President, uh, Mr. Bravo, to handle all the details. So, uh, who will make the presentation? Wait, may we call Mr. or Engineer? Deo, to please uh, give us the, the presentation. Kami naman po sa coalition, lahat ng angulo na pwede mag-resolve sa clean air, malinis na fuel, etc. We're ready to entertain. Kaya this is one of those na nagpo-propose. Ito po yung solution na. So, pakinggan po natin kung anong proposal ng 